and welcome to Americans Learn. My name is Lauren, and I'm back with some Lindsay Nicole. Um, and this one is another extinct. It's the Smilodon because I just watched the smile the uh the big cats video, her second big cats video. Um, and she didn't talk too much about the Smilodon because this video was happening. So I am looking forward to hearing about this Smilodon and seeing what the tattoo looks like. How you doing? You know what day it is? It's a bad day to be a piece of blank skin on me. Cause today I'm getting a tattoo that you would 100% expect from me. This is Smilodon, one of the most iconic extinct animals of all time. You probably know them as the saber-toothed tiger or as Diego from Ice Age. And today their skull is getting tattooed on my leg while I tell you more about them. We're about 80 million years yeah, after the cool. last episode with Diabloceratops, planting ourselves right in the thick of the Pleistocene which lasted from two and a half million to 12,000 years ago. Just like last time, this iconic saber tooth skull is being done by the iconic Angel Rose. You might know from Ink Master and is one of my favorite tattoo artists of all time. So without further ado, my name is Lindsay Nicole and this is Extinct, Extinct. It's very cute. Testing, check, 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 check. You're good. No, no, but here's the thing. I'm like... getting the knee tattooed. <laughs> it's really hard to put Knee, uh, knee stencils on, so you kind of gotta like do it in multiple pieces because oh. the paper will like fold on itself. Yeah, that makes oh, sense. Oh, interesting. Oh my god, <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah, I'm good. You're like, yep, I'm tough now. Yep, yep. it's happening. I'm that looks great. Okay. Let's get the general that's pretty cool out of the way. Despite their common or popular name, saber tooth tiger. Smilodon is not a tiger. I mentioned this in the second episode of The History of Cats, yes, which, did. by the way, is a fantastic prerequisite to this video yep. if you haven't watched it already. Agreed. Smilodon belong to a totally different group of cats, the Macaridons, that are separated from tigers and other cats alive today by at least 10 million years <laughs> Jesus of evolution. Jesus Christ, Probably more okay. like 20. And by the way, their name translates to knife tooth. Very straightforward. The Macaridons yes. were extremely diverse and widespread during their reign, found on every continent except Antarctica and Australia. And in general, Australia doesn't get something. Power in ambush. They're known you as know what? It makes sense Australia doesn't get it. Australia doesn't get it unless it's venomous in some way. <laughs> saber tooth cat lineage, because most species had some varying degree of saber teeth. A couple classics you might be familiar with are Homotheria, popular recently because Nothing. of the cub they found frozen in ice last year. That's a Macaridont. Also, Dinophilus, Macaridus, both Macaridonts, and of course, the beloved Smilodon. That's where the nose would be. Yeah, they. It doesn't have a nose because it's a skull, but yeah. 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 There are three species within yeah. the Smilodon genus, which by the way, the genus is like a group name. Lions and tigers, they're in the same genus, Panthera. Same with leopards, jaguars, and snow okay, leopards, all cool. in Panthera. Obviously they are all different species though, so the specific epithet distinguishes them from each other. So like lions, their scientific name is Panthera leo. Tigers, Panthera tigris. Oh, leopards. Cool. Panthera partis, etc. Oh, partis. In the case of Smilodon, there have been three species described so far. Maybe more to come in the oh, future. Oh, le leopard, I get it. I feel like probably I've experienced, I've been explained that. I feel like I've probably had that explained to me by either Lindsay or Casual Geographic in the past. And I've forgotten and then just rediscovered it. You should all have the memory of a goldfish like me, because when you have the memory of a goldfish like me, then you can rediscover new information over and over again. And apparently goldfish don't actually have a terrible memory, but you know, sayings must. Who the fuck knows? They are Smilodon gracilis, or slender knife tooth, the most small and slender of the three which is really not saying much because they were still big as fuck. They got from like <laughs> 120 to 220 pounds. Dang. So like the size of a puma. They're thought to have been the earliest member of the genus that we know of. They were found in North America from like 2.5 to half a million years ago. Second one, Smilodon populator. Devastator knife tooth, Ooh. the supersized thick tank from South America. They're estimated to have had a max weight of 960 pounds, which is just honestly, Almost disgusting. That's oh my so God. big for a cat dude. And so, because these cats were built for brute That's strength, crazy. seems they could have taken down prey that weighed up to 6,000 pounds. Insane. They're considered some of the largest cats to ever exist that we know of. Yeah. Larger than Siberian tigers that are alive today. Siberian tigers are fucking huge. They're big, yeah. And last, Smilodon fatalis, deadly knife tooth. Mm. The medium sized of the three <laughs> the most the understood middle. because of, drum roll please. Deadly is less, is, I like the deadlies in the middle and devastating. I feel like deadly should be the last one. The Labrea Tar Pits. 
The pit. The Brea tar pits. There have been thousands of fossil specimens found in the pits. Gotta and love so, the La Brea tar pits. California State Fossil, which is sick. And I have a fake one right here. I got this from the La Brea tar pits. Like half the price as the ones you would find online. Just so you know. And so, it is probably not wow. a surprise to you at all. So sick. She spent less than $100. So she spent like $110 or something on that thing. That's crazy that that, that's not that bad. I'd spend $100 on something like that. The ones you would find online, just so you know. And so, it is probably not a surprise to you at all that the species I'm getting tattooed on me is Smilodon fatalis. Deadly. It's Diego. Is that his name? Diego. I guess so. <laughs> I would say Diego is the most famous saber-toothed tiger. That's very yeah. true. So, now that I've introduced you to the genus, let me set the stage for what the world was like around them. North and South America during the Pleistocene. Dramatic swings between ice ages and warmer periods. Huge glaciers and huge fauna. Woolly mammoths, giant ground sloths, glyptodonts the size of cars. Oh my God, really? Your father. And of course, your great, 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 grandparents. During the time that these cats were adapting to dominate their ecosystems, our ancestors were adapting to become intelligent, culturally rich, communicative, innovative. It's pretty crazy to think that our ancestors, who had the same brain capacity as we do to interpret the world around them, probably ran into these cats on a regular basis. Bruh. saber teeth and all. And then, <laughs> thousands of years after they went extinct, we rediscovered them through their remains. In 1842, Danish naturalist Peter Wilhelm Lund described the first fossils from caves in Brazil, naming the species Smilodon populator. First one was Smilodon populator. Later in 1868, Smilodon fatalis was described from North American fossils. And then in 1880, Smilodon gracilis followed. Isn't that funny? It went bigger to smaller, yeah. like a negative correlation between size and order found. Found the biggest one first, smallest one last. Hmm, isn't that swell? But of course, the real it's mother load feels was like the, the way it goes, I guess. The first animal remains were found in them in 1875, and since then, over 2,000 Smilodon fatalis specimens Whoa! have been collected from them. Like, individuals. I don't mean just like 2,000 bones. Pieces. Over 100,000 bones. But 2,000 individuals, because individuals have many bones. You know what I mean? Yeah, Get it? Along with their remains, of course, some of the meals they were going after. Herbivores that got trapped in the tar. Oh, that's and the cats so went after cool. them, got stuck too. The real threat was never Fools. quicksand, kids. <laughs> it was, it was tar. tar all along. Especially tar after it rains, and then the tar looks like a nice place to get a drink. Then you get stuck, and then everybody tries to get a slice, and they get stuck too. That was the tar pits. That's the Dang. whole thing with the tar pits. Okay, now. Today, okay, you know what? It's kind of like in The Last of Us uh, when you toss a brick or something to get all the clickers to come and investigate because they think they're gonna get a meal and then you throw a Molotov in them. <laughs> and that, and then and then they freak out and they run around and then others hear the sounds and come towards them and then they also get caught on fire. It's my favorite trick in that game. <laughs> I love doing that in that game. Smilodon is a pop culture icon, most notably Diego from Ice Age starting two decades ago, but still lives on in people's hear me out cakes. They're arguably Ooh. the most iconic non-dinosaur extinct animals. And of course they are. Their saber teeth are iconic, the most extreme of the saber cat lineage. But did you know that saber teeth are not theirs and theirs only? They have evolved many other times. Allow me to show you some examples. The Nimravids, often called the false saber tooth cats. Nimravids were early carnivorans, so like in the same larger group as cats, and very close to the cat lineage, called Feliform. Cat in shape, looked very cat-like, but were not true cats. I will be covering them in the History of Cats series, because cool. even the false cats deserve a shout out. The Damn straight. cats. Another one, Barbara Felix. They were also almost cats, oh, but not wow. cats. Oh, wow. You know how people little... say cats are all girls and dogs are all boys, you know, like based heard, on yeah. vibes. Barbara Felids are fucking men. Matter of fact, linebackers with rage issues, just based on vibes alone. They will okay. also be covered in the History of Cats series nice. as false cats. Let's move away from the cats because cool, saber cool. teeth didn't just exist. And in the cats. false cats. There have been marsupials in Australia of that course, also Australia. evolved saber teeth completely separately. It's a weird case of convergent evolution. Thylacosmilus, a cat-like marsupial. Nowhere near the cats. On a totally different continent than the cats. Yeah, the on, a, on a continent that didn't have any of the cats. And the cats couldn't even get to, but the cat form is inevitable. As you can see, huh. those bony projections on their lower jaw put in a lot of work. I don't like them very much, to be honest. The lower jaw specifically. They I don't like it out. either. And to it's move weird. away from cat-like creatures, Google. the musk deer, alive to- I've heard those, they're little vampire deers. Today, not to eat with, but to fight for chicks. And one I bet you didn't even think of, the walrus. Eh? Yeah, those tusks are their canine teeth. 
so can technically be considered sabers. But back to the cats, specifically how Smilodon seems to have used their iconic saber teeth. One thing I mentioned in the History of Cats episode is that it seems as though the evolution of the Macaridont saber teeth helped to kill their prey more efficiently using less energy than asphyxiation that we see in cats alive today. So they would use their saber teeth to slash, puncture a huge hole, prey would bleed out. Then you don't have to strangle them and wrestle with them and shit, just one deadly slash. Fatal blow, done, bleed out, finished. Meal is ready. Just because it was more nom, efficient nom, nom. for them in some ways, doesn't mean that it was better because obviously saber tooth cats wasn't. are not alive today. Conical tooth cats, their asphyxiation works for them. Just different strategies that worked for the niches they continuously evolved to fit into. So, Smilodon was an ambush predator, not a chaser. Its short tail and massive build meant it wasn't built for speed, but for wrestling giant prey to the ground. They okay. likely hunted in forested or scrubby environments using cover to get close before launching a surprise attack. We've seen mm -hmm. this with cats on the nature channel. This is yeah. nothing new, but once it caught up, it would use its forelimbs to hold the animal down, deliver that signature saber bite, nice. probably to the throat, severing arteries, bleeding out, killing the prey in seconds. Fossil evidence suggests that Smilodon was a dietary generalist, eating whatever the fuck they could take down, bison, camels, horses, giant ground sloths. Whatever they could handle, they did. Glad. Rip, and they yeah, had a jaw gape like sloth. nobody's business. That's did they crazy. have to have a jaw that opened abnormally wide to be able to use these yeah. teeth? Yeah, max 90 degrees. I said in the video, 90, 90. degrees. It's 120 Woo! degrees. 120 degrees. That's insane. That's almost double that of a modern lion. That's crazy. In contrast to their stocky, built-ass body form, their sabers were- Oh my God, that's kind of snaky, isn't it? Like, unhinge that jaw, holy shit. Yeah, that makes sense though. I hadn't even considered that. Dang. Hadn't considered the implications. Surprisingly fragile, long, slender. Seems as though a misjudged bite could snap up, and did. Most paleontologists think that they delivered a precise bite to the throat, avoiding bone at all costs. And just last year, a paper was published that talked about the development of Smilodon's fangs and the possibility that they were doubled during their teeth. It yeah. seems like as individuals developed, their <clears throat> teeth got more flexible. And at some point, Smilodon juveniles, as their adult saber teeth were growing in, their baby saber teeth stayed to act as support because they weren't flexible enough yet. Oh. They can have both like double fangs essentially for up to 30 months. I'm gonna be honest, really when the cool. stencil was put on my knee, I was scared. I was very scared. Everybody says the knee is horrific. You watch any video of somebody who just got their knee tattooed and they're just unable to move. But you know what? Pain is temporary. Tattoos last for a lifetime. Fuck it, I guess. I'm kind of anticipating that Lindsay's gonna jump as soon as I get like around here because there's like a reflex right there. I have to be light-handed right here just in case Lindsay kicks me on accident. Oh, I did yeah. kick earlier. Did you? The reflex thing, uh, apparently I have terrible knee reflexes. <laughs> oh, that might just be that like I had a... I had this boss. <laughs> Okay, I worked at a coffee shop, right? And uh, you know, I would sit on this little stool sometimes because nothing was happening. And every so often he'd come around and he literally just had like a little hammer and he would do like a reflex test on me for like, <laughs> just to check. Sometimes he would use a hammer, sometimes he would use like something else and he'd be like, oh, your reflexes are so bad. I was like, <laughs> why am I getting reflex tested? <laughs> It was, but he did it like a bunch and like apparently my reflexes are really, really terrible. Like I like never moved. I was like, I was just kind of like, what is that? <laughs> just maybe he wasn't hitting it in the right spot or hitting my knee hard enough. I just was like always still so stunned. I was like, what is happening? Surprised me every single time. Yeah. He was great. Yeah. It's yeah, it's kind of twitching right now. Yeah, I just had a little one. I feel like, and maybe it's because the tattoo mostly avoided the knee. There were some spots on the knee that definitely hurt. Otherwise, it was a pretty easy spot. This wasn't that bad. I don't know if maybe people were being dramatic about how much the knee hurt. At the same time, I did not get most of my kneecap tattooed. The pain on the kneecap, like the parts on the kneecap were not as bad as my back, for example. My back mm. hurt a lot more. So I guess people are just different. People's pain tolerances are different. So whatever. I am so happy with how this tattoo turned out. And now, because I haven't gotten the other ones done yet, I can show you, I can show you in person. Just move this down a little bit. See if I can, wait. <laughs> pretty okay. sick. That looks That's pretty what cool. That one looks like. I don't even think that this matters very much. Let me I tilt it back cool. up and just 
finish the outro. If you like, <laughs> it's all crooked and shit. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next episode of my tattoo series. Also, take some guesses on what you think the remaining three skulls are. See if you get any of them right. In the meantime, check out my other series. <laughs> I'm not gonna History even try. Cats that I'm doing at the same time. Get catchicated. Educated. Educated. I do. I like it. I like Check it, Lindsay. Check out my Patreon for behind the scenes updates, live streams, and our Discord server. And for now, stay curious. The world has a lot for us to learn. See ya. Bye. Okay. Oh, wait, no, there's a lot more. People think I'm making all the people think I'm You're making all the people think I'm scary. I'm not scary. You are scary. You're terrifying. <laughs> only, only like in pictures. Like people are like, you seem really tall in pictures. I'm like, it's because I'm scary. <laughs> I get that too. People can tell I'm short because of, I have this door handle in my videos. Uh, and, I'm, and you're like underneath it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you're actually taller than me. But. I know. I'm the height of the average American woman. Oh, 5'3"? Oh, 5'4". Like five, five? Five, oh, oh, is that average? Yep. Oh. I thought 5'5". Five, five I'm 5'4". Five, four. I'm 5'4". <laughs> You're like five. This is like the. Oh, I am not five two and a half. No, but you're not taller than me. You have shoes on. <laughs> you have shoes on. <laughs> you gotta take the hat. Yeah, they're the same. Hat. <laughs> you gotta take Doing the hat. Doing this face off. to face is gnarly, you guys. <laughs> yeah. Lindsay, you're shorter by like half an inch. Yeah. I'm five three and a half. Whatever. <laughs> okay. Okay. I am. So she's about the same height as me. Then I'm about five three ish. Five three ish. It's been a long time since I've gone to the doctor and felt on myself mentioned. I should go back soon, but I won't cause I hate going to the doctor. No idea how much of that actually translated. <laughs> it's staying in anyway. Bye-bye.